All right, this is Lucas, and uh, what we've got here is a Clausing uh, 5914 lathe. I'm going to pull back a little bit so you can take a look at it. It's a very nice machine. It's an old one. Uh, they don't, uh, of course, make these anymore. Uh, this one's been uh, pretty thoroughly gone through and uh, taking care of a few problems with this one. It had a couple of problems with the uh, apron. I had to retime the apron to make sure that the uh, half nuts closed properly and prevented the uh, uh, clutch in this uh, longitudinal feed and cross feed uh, lever from interfering with uh, or from engaging when the half nut was uh, was engaged. So. Uh, a couple little problems with it, but uh, in general, this lathe has had very little use. Uh, today, I am going to show one problem with a uh, lathe. Uh, in uh, do doesn't have to be this lathe; it could be any type of lathe. Uh, this is a problem with the chuck, and uh, the uh, the problem that uh, has occurred is that this chuck has somehow managed to get a little bell mouth to it, which is interesting. So, what I've got here is a uh, uh, precision ground uh, blanks for drills. So uh, these are available. They're actually quite a handy thing to have. What I found is that uh, when I clamp this uh, piece of half inch stock, I get, uh, oh gosh, quite a bit of wobble. I'm, I'm hoping you can see that on the camera. So this is wobbling about, oh, 20 thousandths, maybe 50 thousandths in each direction. So uh, it's tight on the back. It's tight back here. And we'll, uh, we'll just tighten this up just a tad more. I don't really want to scratch the surface of this uh, of this bar, but uh, I don't know if you can see the gap here. I'm going to try and zoom in on that maybe a little bit, but there's quite a gap right, right here. And uh, we can turn this just a little bit so you can see it, but uh, I think you can probably see that wiggling. So it's actually tight inside the chuck and it's loose out here. So that makes it very difficult to hold on to a, a cylindrical piece. So what we're going to do is uh, take this uh, grinder that's uh, attached to the lathe. This is a Themac grinder. It's a real nice grinder. And uh, we're going to run this grinding wheel into the chuck, uh, rotate the chuck, and then uh, adjust the cross slide to uh, come out a little bit and probably run the uh, traverse, the longitudinal feed on the carriage to uh, run it back in and out. So a couple of notes on this. One, I've got uh, uh, a small abrasive wheel on here and uh, I live in St. Paul, Minnesota. I've got uh, uh, this uh, abrasive wheel came from Seven Corners Ace Hardware and I, I thought I had a couple of them out here. I was going to show those. Uh, this spindle actually has a quarter inch shaft on it and the holes in the uh, and the abrasive wheels are 3 8 so I, I just made these two little arbor washers on either side uh, with an extra step in them to uh, support this and keep this from drifting around. So uh, it's a it's a very powerful motor on this Themac. It's about, uh, what is it, probably half horse or something crazy like that. And it's a uh, J7. Uh, this will spin at very high RPMs and I've got a, I've got a slight gear reduction on it through the belts. So uh, that's uh, we're going to use that in a little bit to uh, to uh, refinish and grind these chuck jaws. By the way, I should point out this is a really good chuck. It's a uh, made in England. It's more than likely a burner chuck, and it's got the separate jaws here for the uh, out outboard side of the uh, chuck, and uh, we can pop these off. I'm going to leave them on. I should point out also that all the numbers on these uh, uh, these jaws. The internal jaws and the chuck, they all match up. So we know that this chuck was all assembled uh, as a unit from the factory. And uh, I believe, I, as I mentioned, that it's a, a burner chuck. So it's actually a very uh, high quality chuck. So we'll try to take this, uh, this cylindrical uh, gripping problem away from this chuck by grinding. So we're at the second installment now of the video. Uh, just want to mention that uh, these are the they're little die grinder uh, wheels, and uh, these I've got two of them here, one about an inch and a half, and the other about an inch, uh, inch and a quarter maybe. Uh, the smaller one is actually the one we're using on this uh, uh, Themac grinder. So I uh, wanted to show how I've got the chuck rigged up here. Uh, what we want to do is prevent play in the jaws of the chuck during the grinding operation. Do it show how that uh, might be a problem. This is another, uh, actually another burner chuck. 
Uh, I'm going to be very careful about uh, setting this on the ways here, but I just want to show that actually you can get quite a bit of a wiggle on the jaws on these chucks, and this is due to any uh, 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 gap between the scroll, the uh, interior scroll on the chuck, and the backs of the jaws which have teeth on them, and uh, anybody that's taken the jaws out of a chuck will, uh, will understand that. So uh, anyway, what we're doing here is we're constraining these jaws from moving by putting strap across them. Strap just goes all around, and uh, we've then opened this up uh, on the back side here by opening the jaws to the degree possible, and that's going to hold the jaws in contact, the teeth on the jaws in contact with the scroll, therefore preventing any movement of these jaws during this operation. Okay, it's a little bit noisier now. Uh, we've got both the, uh, actually there's three motors running. I've got my rotary phase converter running. I've got the uh, motor, the three phase motor in the lathe. And we've got the grinding motor running, so all three are quite loud. Uh, we're advancing the, uh, the, uh, the grinder uh, by the traverse system on the lathe. And then we're going to back the uh, carriage out as we go. We want to grind the front face of the, of the uh, we we're doing the grinding at the front of the opening. I haven't seen any sparks yet, though I did run this through once already. That indicates that it is probably pretty bell badly bell mouth and that this should take care of the problem. It's just now getting past the uh, top jaws and into the rear part of the jaws. Just taking one pass, and uh, the clutch on the uh, on the lathe just kicked out because I set the carriage stop. So uh, we're gonna advance this a little bit, move it out. I want it just to clear the spindle from the uh, grinder. In fact, I'm gonna unplug this. So just now the uh, carriage stop actually kicked out the, uh, the drive clutch for the uh, spindle and of course the carriage drive kicks out at the same time. So uh, we have uh, shut off our grinder just because it's a little quieter without it being running. Without it running, uh, we're now going to back this out. I'm going to show how we're going to adjust the, uh, the depth of cut. So we're going to pull this out. We have to disengage this, pull this out, re-engage this. And I've got a, uh, a screw over here that I put into this uh, lathe to lock the uh, to lock the uh, cross slide, and that screw is right here. So what we're going to do is back this out. That actually pushes on the gib, the taper gib. We're going to uh, adjust this back by about two marks, which should give us about one one thousand off the radius. And then going to tighten this up again and we'll start the process over. Now I'm also going to move this over just a bit. I don't expect, I'm going to run this first manually. I don't expect there to be any uh, any grinding going on on the outer part of these jaws because they're uh, pretty badly tapered. So uh, we're going to do the first part manually. And any sparking, which indicates that the grinding wheel is not actually in contact with the jaws. I can hear something now, so we'll left. Uh, yeah, we can see it's a little bit of sparking going on. So we're going to let this run uh, with the carriage advance. It's a little bit like watching paint dry, but. Uh, We'll watch this for a little bit and we'll, uh, we'll do this several times until we get out to the uh, cutting the outer parts of the jaws. Really, 
just one jaw on the outside. You can see there's only one spark. Later on, when we get down inside further, we'll see that every time the jaws come past the grinding wheel, we get a spark, so we get three for rotation. Right now, we're only hitting one, maybe two of the jaws, so that's telling us that uh, we're getting this uh, to be concentric with the spindle now. So we're going to take a look now at the uh, results. Uh, I've got the... Uh, this is the grinding wheel. It looks about the same diameter as when we started. Uh, there's the uh, beginning and there's the end. I, I'm going to take and mic it. But uh, I did put some uh, cloth here. It's actually some paper towels. Uh, uh, they should be wetted with something uh, to collect the swarf that comes off the grinding process. There is a little bit of uh, grinding dust here. But because this wheel is uh, it's not a vitrified wheel, it's not very friable. It's pretty tough. It's uh, organically bonded. It's uh, like I said, it's a die grinder wheel. So uh, I think that this wheel would have a less of a tendency to uh, produce uh, abrasive dust. Uh, there is going to be quite a bit inside the chuck, only because it did more grinding at that end than uh, out here in the outboard end. If we take a look at the jaws themselves, they actually look uh, quite good. They're uh, I got to get the set of back here. Here, here we go. They're uh, pretty uniformly ground all along here. And there is quite a bit of uh, more grind, uh, evidence of uh, deeper grind back in the back part of the jaw, which kind of lends itself, uh, lends to the theory that uh, these jaws were actually a little bit, uh, a little bit tapered or bell mouthed. So we're going to take this uh, half inch rod again and put it in the chuck and just see what we end up with here in terms of uh, the amount of. Uh, play that we have in the rod itself and actually there's a there's just about zero play in it and if we tighten it up good of course it's uh, it looks really good so uh, if we uh, I'm sure if we put an indicator on this it would actually come out really concentric that just indicates that the uh, jaws are now very much in alignment with the center line of the spindle so uh, we got rid of the of the uh, sloppiness in this in this chuck uh, with the themac grinder and uh, it was a, in, in all, pretty, uh, pretty painless process. Uh, the Themax a good tool. It seems to work uh, really well. And uh, just to show you the, uh, the rear end of this thing where the uh, belts are uh, on it, uh, that's the way they, they look. I've got a, I think this is the number two, and this is the number three. And uh, actually these two are probably the most commonly used uh, pulleys. You can actually change these out. There's everything from a one inch uh, which is a number one. Uh, don't be confused though, the numbers don't actually mean the diameter up to a five, which is about four inches, a little over four inches in diameter. So uh, this uh, is actually a pretty powerful little uh, grinder and it worked extremely well and I was uh, happy with the performance of the uh, cutoff wheel for the die grinder in, in uh, uh, substitution for a, a proper uh, fritted grinding wheel. So this is Lucas signing off till next time. Bye bye.